The peacock muddler, without a doubt, is one of my all-time confidence flies when it comes to fishing for steelhead on the Columbia tributaries. Uh, as I say in the book, it's a spinoff of Dex, steelhead muddler, but also has some John Hazel influence as well. So let's get started. What we want to do first is attach the tying thread to the hook. And I'm using a chartreuse thread here. Obviously, I wouldn't be using that if I was tying for fishing, but uh, that chartreuse shows up really good for the demo. So that's why we're using chartreuse. And I attached it about a third, you can say two thirds from the bend or a third back from the eye. Um, this fly is going to be split up into kind of two sections, the front part of the muddled head and the, and the body. And the body is a tinsel body with a rib. So the first thing that we do is we lock the rib in the back of the hook. And this ribbing is, is just uh, lager tune oval in uh, medium silver. And then the body, we're gonna use uni mylar tinsel. This one's peacock and orange. And so it's two-sided. We have orange on one side and peacock on the other. So to get the peacock to turn and be the, the color on top, you want to lash the peacock color to the hook. And then that first turn of tinsel will be peacock. And then we're just going to run that down the bend of the hook. We keep our ribbing right on the back edge of the hook. We want to be pretty consistent with our wraps. Try not to overlap. And be firm with your turns. Mylar has a little bit of stretch, a little bit of give, so you want to make sure that you're putting a little heat to it to get it down on that shank of the hook nice and tight. And then once we've got our, our body in, we'll catch it. and then bring our rib forward. And the rib, it's just five or six turns. Nice open turns. Try to keep the gaps the same. And I'm trying to shoot here. I'm shooting to end that tinsel on the bottom. A couple firm securing wraps locks that in. And let's just make sure that everything lines up right. Uh, it's looking good before we clip our excess. And this, this point right here where we've stopped the body is where we're going to secure the wing in. You want to make sure that you keep everything nice and tidy right here. We're gonna leave that shank free of any materials, thread. Um, so when we go to put the head on, we're spinning the hair on just bare shank. Okay, so there's our body. Now next, we're gonna put an underwing on this fly of squirrel. And I take every color of dyed squirrel that I have. And I clip a small clump off of each. I'll get the longest ones. And then we're going to clean it. Get all the short hairs out of there. All the hairs are 
the same length. And then I just put them in a pile. And once I've got all the colors that I want piled up, I'll take and pull them by the tips, realign. And I'll just keep doing this until I've mixed all those colors together. And then once you're happy with the mix, they go tips first into the hair stacker. And a couple good wraps to line them up. And didn't quite get it, so I'm gonna redo it. There we go. And once they're all lined up, you can take them out and then gauge to length by holding that clump in your right hand. And I want this wing to be just right to the bend or just a little bit past the bend of the hook. And I'll put that wing down right on top, secure with my left hand, a loose wrap. And then on the second one, pull straight down, pull straight up, straight down, and try to keep that wing from spinning around the hook. Squirrel's really slick. So you want to get it in there nice and tight. If this isn't bound up tight, when you go to put on the, the wing, um, it'll all just kind of roll. So make sure it's on there good and tight. Then for the wing, we're going to use peacock feathers. And this one I pretty well have used up, but it's this color right here that we're looking for. And I'm going to cut two strips off each side. And then once I've got my strips, I'll just take and place them back to back. I'll line them up. And setting a strip wing is, is not all that difficult if you prepare your strips correctly. So I'm looking at that and you want them both to be the same thickness and the same shape. And then look to make sure that it, they're not curved. You want them straight. So I'm gonna gauge this to length and I want it to be just a little bit longer than our underwing. And then I'm gonna take this and if you watch, it will open up just a little bit. And that opening, I'm gonna put right down on top of the tie-in point. Then I'm going to come back and pinch right on top of the tie-in point, just as hard as I can. And bring the tie-in thread up through my finger and thumb, and then down, and then once again up, and then I'm just going to pull straight up, nice and slow, trying to fill each one of those barbs compressed down onto the hook. And then once I've done that, I'll put a couple of firm securing wraps in before I let go, kind of tidy up the tag ends. And then when I let go of this, that wing should be right in place. And I got a couple of flyers here I'll just get rid of with my Tweezers, great tool to have on your on your bench. And then you can go ahead and put a couple extra 
wraps on, build this up, and then when we go to the next step, I'll take them off. But to have that secured really tight right there, when you go to trim all these tag ends, it won't spin your wing out of place. Okay, just tidy up. Get everything cut. And like I say, I'm trying to keep that front of the hook nice and clean. So I'll Then we come in now with our next step, which is adding the gills. And that's just red dubbing. I'm just gonna touch dub this. And it can be any red dubbing. All it needs to do is show some red. A little bit of dubbing on there. Make sure you get it on there nice and tight. And then when I dub this, I'm gonna stay right on top of that platform built from the, the two wing materials. I'm not going to come off of it. I build up just a small ball. And then now we're ready. We're ready for our muddled head. So for the head, we're going to use deer hair, and we're just going to spin it on the shank of the hook. So I grab a pretty good clump, more than what I need, and I clip that off the hide as close to the hide as I can, and then I'm going to clean this. By cleaning it, I mean I'm going to take all the fuzz and all the short hairs out of it. If it's really bad, I'll, I'll use a comb, run a comb through it. I want just to get everything out of there that doesn't belong. And then once we've got our clump cleaned, I'm going to stack this, so tips first into the stacker. Some good wraps on the bottom of that stacker, and then when you take it out, they should be all aligned and ready to go. And I'm going to gauge this color to length by holding the clump in my right hand, gauge it to length. Then I'm going to transfer to my left hand. And then I'm going to gauge the length that I want the muddled head. And I'm going to clip that off just perfectly straight. By doing this, I should be able to spin that on there and not have to do any trimming when I'm done. So I'm going to set this on top of the hook, a loose wrap over the top, my second one it tightens up a little bit. I'm going to put a third one on and before I spin it, I'm just going to press down on everything, kind of force that deer hair down onto the shank of the hook, then I'll just let it spin. And 
tidy it up a little bit. Making sure that I got collar all the way around. And then I'll chase the thread through the muddled head up to the eye. And then when I'm happy, I'm just throwing a whip finish. Trying not to trap any of those hairs. And clip it. check to make sure that nothing's out of place. If you got a couple that you need to trim up and tidy up, that's okay. I'll take it. The Peacock Muddler. <laughs>